The Mission Impossible franchise really is an anomaly in Hollywood, whereas most franchises start out strong and sequentially get worse with each installment. Mission Impossible is the complete opposite, where it started out kinda mediocre with the first two films, and from the third one they just got better and better and better. And Dead Reckoning Part 1 is another awesome addition to this franchise. For all the reasons that you pretty much already know, the action sequences are just... <sighs> what more can be said about Mission Impossible action scenes at this point? Tom Cruise just throws himself into all these stunts, the car chases, the shootouts, the fight scenes, these massive, just death-defying leaps of craziness. It's just, you have to see it on the big screen to really just bask in the brilliance of it. But the amazing thing about these recent Mission Impossible films, this one especially, is that the action sequences are 100% narrative driven. There is not a shred of wasted spectacle in this film. Not once does a chase or a fight or a stunt happen and you think to yourself, why is this happening right now? Everything has a point and purpose. This is the kind of Hollywood franchise blockbuster film that all other Hollywood franchise blockbuster films should aim to be like. One that provides the great story, great characters and great writing around the spectacle and the action. The story in this one had me glued to the screen and riveted even when action scenes weren't happening. The stakes have never been higher and not in that cheap marketing thing where they can just put that in the trailers and posters. The stakes have never been higher. No, seriously, when you learn about the threat that they're facing in here, you're like, damn, you gotta put a stop to that because it's bad news for the human race. The team dynamic is really good once again. I like the back and forth between Tom Cruise, Simon Pegg, Ving Rhames, Rebecca Ferguson. There's some really good humor in there that once again does not jeopardize or compromise any of attention. Hayley Atwell was a really good new addition to the film. I liked her character a lot and they do some parallels with her and Ethan Hunt in terms of some backstory you'll learn about Ethan Hunt in the film and how they're kind of similar. And I just liked what they did with Hayley Atwell and her development throughout the film, and she was really good in the action scenes as well. There are some elements in here that feel borrowed or copied and pasted from previous Mission Impossible films, in particular the last one, like the villain Gabriel. I liked Gabriel as the villain, he was very menacing and very threatening, but it's another villain that's hell-bent on making it personal for Tom Cruise. Like, he's got to choose which ones of the people he cares about to save and all that stuff that you remember Solomon Lane doing in the previous two films. And plot-wise, there's a couple of familiar beats around the middle part of the film where all the parties are kind of gathering to talk about the MacGuffin and there's talk about buyers and couriers like you heard again in the last Mission Impossible film. Just bits and pieces like that where you're like, yeah, I've, I've kind of been here before. But it doesn't really affect the tension of the plot too much. It's just something that you will notice. Also, this being yet another part one film, there is a slight feeling of incompleteness to it, which again, I know that's by design. The film really does feel like one half of a five hour epic Mission Impossible film and the two hour 40 minute runtime absolutely flew by. I was surprised at how short this film actually felt for it being nearly three hours long. Minor issues aside, Dead Reckoning Part 1 again is another fantastic addition to just this anomaly of a film franchise for Hollywood in terms of them getting better going into the seventh film that just has to be seen on the biggest screen that you can find to truly appreciate it. And when those credits roll and it says end of part one, you're gonna be itching and chomping at the bit for Dead Reckoning Part Two next year.